2 Chronicles 12, 1-16 Devotional Focus Verse And when the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, saying, They have humbled themselves, therefore I will not destroy them, but I will grant them some deliverance, and my wrath shall not be poured out upon Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. 2 Chronicles 12.7 God's mercy is amazing towards those who humble themselves. Today's text relates that Rehoabam and the people of Judah chose not to follow God and His laws. They knew what God wanted them to do, but they did not do it. Yet when God said their enemies would overcome them, they humbled themselves and God reduced the judgment. Many years ago, Lois Allen also knew about God and chose to go her own way. She said, My mother taught me the right way, but at an early age I turned it all down. I said, Oh, that life is too tame for me. I gave my all, my health, my strength, my all to sin. Some people of God held special services where my parents lived and my mother told the minister about her daughter who was over in the city wasting her life in riotous living. She said, I wish you would pray for that girl, that God would save her at any cost. When they started praying, God began to deal with me. He permitted a terrible affliction to come upon my body. I went from a well, strong, robust woman to a very shadow of my old self. I was sick from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. My mind was gone for hours at a time. I couldn't even tell you my own name. I was married and had two little children. One day, the census taker came to my house and asked me the names of my children. I just looked at her. I couldn't remember their names. One April night, in an old farmhouse, I got out of bed and knelt on my knees. God, in His infinite mercy and love, let real Holy Ghost conviction come down into that room. And I saw myself slipping into hell. I cried out from the depth of my heart. For the first time in my life, I became honest. Oh, how I thank God that He came down and transformed my heart and life. Jesus came into this poor life of mine that sin had ruined. Thank God for His wonderful salvation. I began to read the Word of God, and He showed me that He was able to take care of my body as well as my soul. My affliction affected my mind, heart, stomach, and nervous system. I was a total wreck and only 26 years of age. Yet God healed me of every trace of that affliction. Sister Allen humbled herself, and God intervened in her life. Unlike Ruaboam, who did not follow through, but instead chose to do evil, Sister Allen served God wholeheartedly all the rest of her life. She became a minister of the gospel and loved to encourage others to also make a full commitment to God. Humbling ourselves before God is the route toward His help. And then if we purpose to stay fully yielded to Him, His blessings will follow. Background Information This chapter is a record of the reign of Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, who began reigning in Judah at the age of 41, and ruled for 17 years. Although Rehoboam seemingly leaned on God to a certain degree as he began to reign, When his kingdom prospered, he forsook the law of the Lord and all Israel with him. See verse 1. Further details of Judah's apostasy are given in 1 Kings 14, 21-24. As punishment, because they, Judah, had transgressed against the Lord, see verse 2, God allowed Shishak, the king of Egypt, to invade the nation. The word transgressed in this phrase is a key term used frequently in 1st and 2nd Chronicles. It refers to denying God the worship due to Him, usually on a national level, and is the main reason given in Chronicles for the exile. 
According to verses 2 and 3, Shishak, the king of Egypt, with the help of the Lubans, allies from Libya, the Sukkims, thought to have been cave dwellers who lived near the Red Sea, and Ethiopians, captured many of Judah's fortified cities, and then came against Judah's capital city of Jerusalem. A record of this invasion has been verified by archaeological finds in Karnak, located in southern Egypt. Shemaiah, referred to in verse 5, was the prophet who had counseled Rehoboam not to attack the ten tribes of Israel when they rejected his leadership and formed the northern kingdom of Israel. See 2 Chronicles 11, 1 through 4. When Egypt invaded, Shemaiah spoke to all the leaders of Judah, telling them that Shishak had overcome them because they had forsaken God. In response, the leaders humbled themselves before the Lord. Their statement in verse 6 that the Lord is righteous indicated they understood that their treatment at the hands of Shishak was deserved. In response to their repentance, God granted Judah some deliverance, see verse 7, meaning he did not allow the nation to be completely destroyed by the Egyptians. However, the people of Judah did have to serve Shishak, likely by paying tribute. Verse 9 indicates that Shishak took away the treasures from the temple and the king's house, along with the shields of gold that Solomon had made. King Rehoboam later had bronze shields made to replace them. This substitution of bronze for gold illustrates the decline that took place under the rule of Rehoboam. Though Solomon had left great riches to his son and successor, that wealth was greatly diminished after only five years because Rehoboam and Judah turned away from God. Verse 14 provides a sad summary of Rehoboam's rule. He did evil, because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. Verse 15 indicates that repeated wars took place between Rehoboam and Jeroboam, king of the ten tribes that separated from Judah. Some sources indicate that these were probably border disputes over the territory occupied by the tribe of Benjamin which was located between the two kingdoms. Verse 16 records that Rehoboam died apparently of natural causes and was buried in Jerusalem. Conclusion Today's text is an illustration of God's mercy to those who humble themselves before Him. May that be the attitude of our hearts. Two Chronicles Chapter 12 And it came to pass, when Rehoboam had established the kingdom, and had strengthened himself, he forsook the law of the Lord, and all Israel with him. And it came to pass, that in the fifth year of King Rehoboam Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem, because they had transgressed against the Lord. With twelve hundred chariots, and threescore thousand horsemen, and the people were without number that came with him out of Egypt, the Lubims, the Sukkiums, and the Ethiopians. And he took the fenced cities which pertained to Judah, and came to Jerusalem. Then came Shemaiah the prophet to Rehoboam, and to the princes of Judah, that were gathered together to Jerusalem because of Shishak, and said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Ye have forsaken me, and therefore have I also left you in the hand of Shishak. Whereupon the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves, and they said, The Lord is righteous. And when the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, saying, They have humbled themselves, therefore I will not destroy them, but I will grant them some deliverance, and my wrath shall not be poured out upon Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. Nevertheless they shall be his servants, that they may know my service, and the service of the kingdoms of the countries. So Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem, and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house, he took all, he carried away also the shields of gold which Solomon had made. Instead of which king Rehoboam made shields of brass, and committed them to the hands of the chief of the guard, that kept the entrance of the king's house. And when the king entered into the house of the Lord, the guard came and fetched them, and brought them again into the guard chamber. And when he humbled himself, 
the wrath of the Lord turned from him, that he would not destroy him altogether, and also in Judah things went well. So King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem, and reigned, for Rehoboam was one and forty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, to put his name there. And his mother's name was Nama and Ammonitus. And he did evil, because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. Now the acts of Rehoboam, first and last, are they not written in the book of Shemaiah the prophet, and of Edo the seer concerning genealogies? And there were wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David, and Abiah his son reigned in his stead.